The first organism I'm going to talk about is a sea anemone called Edward Siella andrele, which was only discovered in the Antarctic field season of 2010 and 2011 when a remotely operated vehicle, an ROV, was deployed under the Ross Ice Shelf. The flat underside of the ice was about 260 metres deep and attached to it, upside down, was the anemone. It lives in burrows dug into the bottom of the ice shelf. It is opaque and sizes ranged from 16 to 20 millimetres in length with 20 to 24 tentacles. The conditions under the ice shelf are challenging, with temperatures close to minus 2 in the winter, but could be as much as 0.4 degrees in the summer when warmer water is advected under the ice shelf. Salinity can range from near zero in the meltwater at the ice boundary layer to 34.6 to 34.9 parts per thousand. 35 parts per thousand is the salinity of seawater. When illuminated by the lights on the ROV, they glowed an orange colour. It is not known whether this is due to the food the animals eat or if they themselves are generating it. As yet, no one knows what they feed on or indeed what preys upon them. Another organism that was also seen by the ROV is a feather star. There are over 500 species of feather stars and they live in waters around the world and in habitats ranging from the littoral zone to several thousands of metres in depth. They are related to echinoderms like sea urchins and starfish. Promacocrinus kogelensis is the species of feather star that lives in Antarctic waters. It has a wide range and has been found in diverse places such as in the waters around South Georgia to under the Ross ice shelf. They like strong currents which enables them to feed on plankton by extending their arms and filtering plankton and detritus material from the water. What I love about them is how they move. They do this by repeatedly beating their arms. The other amazing thing about them is that DNA analysis has shown that Promacorhinus cogolensis could in fact be six different species. They are morphologically indistinguishable, but are genetically different enough not to be able to interbreed. This could explain their ability to live in such different habitats. They are in fact different species. It is not only ice shelves that organisms live under, but also sea ice. Antarctic sea ice is ice that is formed on the sea during the winter months and melts again in the spring. 15% of this ice may remain through the summer, and then it is known as multi-year ice. As the majority of Antarctic sea ice is only one winter old, it is relatively thin, often only reaching one metre thick at the most. An Antarctic fish that lives under sea ice is the bald rock cod, which has the Latin name Pagothenia borschgravinki. It is found in many places, ranging from the Antarctic Peninsula to the Weddell and Ross Sea. It can be found at depths from the surface to 550 metres, although it is usually seen above 30 metres. The bald rock cod are cryopelagic, that is, they live under the ice and come into close contact with ice crystals. They are well adapted to live here, being camouflaged from below, with divers reporting them as silhouetted against a background of platelet ice. Their diet consists of organisms that live immediately beneath the ice, but also from the water column. What is really interesting about them is that, like other Antarctic fish, they have antifreeze in their blood to stop it from freezing. And since they have a close association with ice, they have more of this antifreeze glycoproteins than other Antarctic fish. The antifreeze protein does not actually stop the blood from freezing, rather it inhibits the growth of any ice crystals that form in the blood. A better name for the antifreeze would be ice binding protein. The mucus on the outside of ice fish also contain antifreeze proteins and are thought to play a protective role in preventing ice entering the fish. It has been suggested that once the protein binds to the ice crystal, that the crystal is removed from circulation by phagocytosis and taken to the spleen where it is stored until it can be dealt with at a later date. Another organism found under Antarctic sea ice is krill. Krill are small crustaceans which are found in all the world's oceans. Antarctic krill are called Euphorsia superba and are found throughout the southern ocean. In the summer months when they reproduce and grow, they live in the water column in large swarms, moving up to the surface at night to feed on phytoplankton. Research has revealed that krill larvae, juveniles and some adults overwinter immediately beneath the sea ice, finding food and shelter there. In the Weddell Sea, krill was seen from the deck of the ship, the Polish Stern, associated with the underside of the ice as the ship broke through it. I have been on the Polish Stern and it is quite something feeling the ship vibrate and shudder as it ploughs through the ice, and it can be quite alarming at times. 
Crow were also observed under the ice using an ROV. The most dense populations were found in caverns and crevices under pressure ridges and the branch cavities forming on the ice undersurface during melting in late November. The crow were found to be feeding on the algae found growing under the ice. They used the legs found on their thorax. Not surprisingly, these legs are called feeding legs or thoracopods. I have seen this myself when I was lucky enough to dive under Antarctic sea ice. I had to hold my breath as the bubbles I exhaled disturbed them. They would scrape the algae off the surface of the ice and roll it up into tiny balls and pop it into their mouths. It was absolutely fascinating to watch. Krill can also feed by filtering ice algae released when the ice starts to melt. My fifth organism, and probably the most important, is sea ice algae. Algae, being plants, are at the bottom of the food chain. They provide food for the krill and other creatures, which ultimately feed animals such as penguins and baleen whales. Around a thousand species of ice algae have been identified as living in this unique environment provided by the sea ice. They are adapted to be able to photosynthesize at extremely low light levels, even in midwinter. Although these light levels are low, they are consistent. Algae which live in the water column, the phytoplankton, are at the mercy of the ocean currents and receive a range of light levels as they journey up and down the water column. Each ice algal cell can divide every two days, which means a mass of algae weighing 200 grams can grow to a kilogram in just four days. Algae are not only found underneath the sea ice, but they can also grow inside ice channels that form when the sea ice first freezes. Research has shown that 88% of the carbon uptake of overwintering larval and juvenile krill come from ice algae. The ice algae became increasingly important as a food source for krill as winter progressed and before the spring phytoplankton bloom occurred. Sea ice in the Antarctic has been monitored using satellites for the past 40 years. In that time, sea ice extent in the Bellinghausen Sea, which is on the west side of the Antarctic Peninsula, has decreased, whilst in all other areas, sea ice extent has increased, until 2014 that is, when the trend reversed and sea ice extent reached its lowest level in 2017. The decrease has been so dramatic that the increase in sea ice seen over the last 35 years has disappeared in just a few years. Bizarrely, the sea ice in the Bellinghausen Sea showed a slight increase in 2015. There is obviously a lot of work for scientists to do to gain an understanding about all of this. But the really scary thing is that in the three years from 2014 to 2017, the Antarctic experienced a reduction of 89% of the total decrease seen in the Arctic over a 34 year period. So what would happen if there continues to be such a dramatic reduction in Antarctic sea ice? Well, it would have huge implications for the amount of sea ice algae growing and subsequently impact on organisms such as krill, which rely on the ice algae for food and the sea ice itself as an overwintering habitat. Although there could be a longer phytoplankton growth season, it is unlikely to provide enough energy to ensure the winter survival of the first year krill, and so there will be a reduction in the overall biomass of krill. The consequences of this are unbearable to think about. Many animals are dependent upon krill. For some, it forms much of their diet. This includes penguins such as the dailies, emperors and gentoos and seals such as crab eater seals, the Antarctic fur seal, and even the leopard seal eats krill. And the giant humpback whales also feast on the small crustaceans. Without sea ice algae, the entire Antarctic food web will be in jeopardy, and many of the iconic species from this icy world will be lost forever.